Well, good morning, church. Welcome to Epicenter. We are so glad that you've joined us today. Um, we just want to worship our God together. So wherever you are, whether you're in your lounge room or whether you're um, out at a park somewhere, whether you're watching on Sunday morning or later on during the week, we just want to say, come and worship with us. We have a God who is incredible. We have a God who loves us and does everything that He can to get towards us. So I'm just going to pray before we start and then we're going to get into it. God, we just thank You. We thank You that You are an amazing God who loves us so much. We thank You that You are with us, that You will never leave us, that we cannot hide from Your presence, God. And you deserve all the honour and all the glory and all the praise. So that's what we're going to do right now. So join with me, guys. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along. You turn bones into arms. 
There is nothing better than your presence. Our amazing God. Let's sing this together. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I'll raise a
is alive. He's not dead. He's he's alive and he's in heaven and he is he is with us. What an amazing thought. serve a God who never leaves us we can never get away from his presence and the amazing thing about God is that he he loves us so much that he will never leave us alone he loves us so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for us so that we could get as close to him as we wanted, he took all the steps. He did, went as far as he could go to get towards us. And all we have to do is, is accept him, is, is take that gift, that amazing gift. How incredible God. You know, we're going to sing a new song right now. It's called Waymaker. And the chorus says... Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, a light in the darkness, our God, that is who you are. And as we're singing it today, I want to remind you that whatever situation you're coming up against, whatever um, you're dealing with, whether it's financially, whether it's in your marriage with your kids, whatever it is, our God is a waymaker. He never leaves you alone and our God will... He is a powerful God. He is a powerful God. And He is a way maker. And so we're going to sing that song right now. And I want you to join with us. <laughs> you are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in you I worship you you are here 
you know, we're going to sing that chorus again. But before we do, I just really felt like I, we will need to pray over there's some people in our lives. We all have these people who um, don't know Jesus or have walked away from a relationship with Him. And I really feel like we need to pray over those people. You know that they're the people who you've been praying for for so long and they seem to take, you know, two steps forward and five steps back and it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you what you are thinking about, it doesn't matter what you do, you feel like you just cannot get any closer to them being with Jesus. So right now, we're going to lift those people up in our thoughts and in our prayers. We're going to lift those people up to a God who is a way maker, who is a miracle worker, who can move mountains and he can he can touch the lives of those people around you. Maybe it's a dad, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your um, one of your siblings, maybe it's one of your kids. Whoever it is in your life, let's hold those people up and let's declare that God, you have your way in their lives. You are more powerful than anything trying to hold them back from a relationship with you. So we're going to sing this over them right now. Please join me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Because you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Over this town, let's sing it out. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Over our marriages and our relationships, you are.
of a God that we can stand on his promises. Jesus, that's who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You never change, you never will. That is who you are. feel when we don't know what to say when things don't seem to be lining up with what we expect you are the way maker and you move you are a God who always keeps your promises and a God who never leaves us and he never will in Psalm 139 it says Where can I flee from your presence? Where can I hide from you? Because you've knit me together in my mother's womb. You've knit me together and you know all the hairs on my head. You've done everything that you can do to get towards us. So God, we just want to reach out and grab you. Father, we love you, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that moves in our lounge rooms right now. Wherever we are, we thank you that you are with us, that you will never leave us. You are an amazing God and you deserve all the honour and all the glory and all the praise, Father. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, welcome to church, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us through that worship session. My name is Kat. For those of you who don't know me, I am one of the worship leaders here, although I haven't done it for a very long time. And I'm also the kids coordinator here. So if you have any kids in your family, I would love to connect with you. My favorite thing in the world is connecting families to each other and connecting families to God. So um, please, if you would like to, I would love to connect with your family. Please just um, message me, whatever it is. Um, I would love, love, love to connect with you. You know, I always tell my epic kids, uh, church is where we get together to love God and love and encourage each other. So wherever you are today, thank you for joining us. We are doing church together, even if you're in your house and I'm um, here. (laughs) Um, We just wanted to say a massive thank you um, for those who have joined our Epicenter community um, Facebook page. Uh, You know, we've had so many likes and shares and comments on on the things that are posting. And you know, that's just one way that we can all connect together. Uh, One way that we can all uh, do church together during this time. It's so, so important and it's just, just one way we can do it. So thank you very much. If you are not a part of our Facebook Facebook online community, uh, join us. We would love to connect with you. We would love to encourage you and and love on you and and build you up. Um, That's what we do here. We would love it. Um, Now, just before I ask Adam Mitchell to come and speak, I'm just going to lead us quickly around our giving. And I really felt today, you know, if you have, um, if you have, and have not here, been here before, if you haven't, you're not a part of our church normally, or if you're, um, even if you don't feel like it, I would encourage you, you don't have to give. 
that's absolutely fine. Um, if you feel like it, you know, we are a church who um, we are we are doing something, we are moving, we are growing, we are changing, we are trying to build a relationship with the community around us and we are trying to um, move people towards a relationship with God. That's what we're here for. And if you would like to partner with us as we do that, um, we would love it if you would give. Now there is um, all the details on the screen below me, um, but please, 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 Feel free to give. We would really, really love th for you to partner with us as we do that. So let's have a look at the screens and then Adam is going to come up and speak. Giving to support our local church should be easy. And with Tithely, it is. Just download the app and securely register your debit or credit card details and you're done. Now you can give during church services or anywhere else. Use Tithely as a one-time gift or set up reoccurring donations. It's that simple. It's fast, secure and easy to use. It's the simplest way to give online. Well, good morning and welcome to Epicentre Church. Uh, my name is Adam Mitchell and I have the honour and the privilege to be able to share a message with you today. Um, I would just like to begin by praying and then we'll, we'll jump into the message. So, Heavenly Father, I just pray, Lord, that you are, you are the, the King of our world. Lord, you are King of the physical realm and the spiritual realm. Lord Father, I pray that you uh, use my mouth to speak, Lord Father, and that you touch the hearts of the people who are listening today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, as most of you would know, um, I've been a Christian for the last 10 years and I've got the honour of um, talking about that today. And we're in the middle of doing our Kingdom Builders um, series, which we do yearly. And it's about um, building the Kingdom of God, building the church and building the people that are a part of that as well. So uh, I feel like God's laid it on my heart to talk about Kingdoms in the spiritual and also in the physical. So um, I guess to explain my, my story, um, I grew up, I guess, in a, a non-Christian home, but my parents were very conservative and they raised us with what I would say would be Christian values. Um, and then as I got older, I went down to Melbourne and I became a chef and I moved into, uh, into the hospitality trade. So, um, as a chef in Melbourne, there's a whole different culture that happens in the hospitality industry. Uh, and there's a saying I can remember when I first became an apprentice, they would say most chefs are either druggos, alcoholics or gay, or a mixture of the three. And it was just such a, a strange culture that I'd got thrown into. Um, but with that culture came um, drugs and alcohol and partying and all, all the different things that you know, a young boy, I guess 18 year old, going down to the city, that culture started to impact me and impact the way that I viewed the world. I met a lot of people with different religions and different cultures and uh, over the period of 12 years, um, I took a lot of that culture and a lot of those different religions and they become who I was. And then God impacted me uh, and he saved me. Um, and I remember when I first got saved, like I was very anti-Christian and anti-church and I just, I didn't want to have anything to do with Christians at all. I didn't understand them. I didn't know who they were and um, I just thought they ruined history and that they come to just destroy everything and control people and make life a living hell, so to speak. So I didn't want to have anything to do with them. And I can remember um, saying to my wife, Rebecca, well, when I got saved, I didn't really want to be a Christian, but uh, after a few months, I felt God tell me to go to church. So 
this is how bad it was. Like, I didn't want to get seen by any of my friends or by anyone that I knew going to church. So we, we went as far as to go down to Rochester for the first church that we went to. Um, and as I started to study the Word of God and um, understand it a bit more, I realized that my life and my culture was very different from what God's life and His culture and what He wanted for my life. And, and, it, and I was afraid to share that um, with my friends and family. But over time, um, that changed. But I guess in one way or another, we can all relate in some context where we don't know quite how to share our faith or we don't know how to um, speak to people about our God's kingdom and His beliefs um, and what that kingdom and that belief looks like. Um, some of us might even think that the Bible is outdated these days and, and think that a lot of things that are in there don't really fit into the world that we fit into these days. Um, other people might not even be a Christian and just totally confused about what all of this is about. Um, and I guess the biggest thing is that being kingdom builders, learning how to share God's kingdom is something that I think we all struggle with in some way. Uh, how do we do that confidently? How do we um, know how to go about building that kingdom and how to share that, our faith with people? So um, I guess what, the way I would like to start doing it and talking about this is I'm going to talk about um, Joshua. And Joshua uh, went into um, over the Jordan and in the Old Testament and he basically paved the way of the physical kingdom for the Israelites. So I'd like to start with the Old Testament and talk a little bit about that. And then I'll talk about Jesus and how he fits into his kingdom. And it, and it all comes down to our beliefs. So every kingdom has a common belief. Okay? And that's something that people rally behind and people think about. And that's how we, um, I've learnt to look at my Christian faith as I've uh, progressed in my walk. So uh, we'll just jump into the text of what God um, has to say about kingdoms. Um, and we'll talk about those beliefs and how he wants us to go about building that kingdom. So we'll start off in the Old Testament and talk about the physical kingdom. Now, I know some of these scriptures are going to probably impact a few people um, with how God did things in the Old Testament. Um, and I'd love you to chat to me about this. Put some comments uh, in below in Facebook and, and I'll be able to answer some of those questions for you. So... We'll start off with uh, Deuteronomy 7.1. And it says, When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess, and he drives out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergetites, and the Amorites. So God, God's talked to Joshua, and this is before they're starting to go. Actually, he's talking to Moses at this point. This is the promise word that he's talking about. And then Joshua is going to go into the land um, and, and basically build the kingdom of God uh, in the Middle East. So the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations more numerous and powerful than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you and you defeat them, you must completely destroy them, make no treaty with them, and show them no mercy. Completely destroy. I guess that's something that people don't quite understand what's going on there. Why, why is God telling him to destroy these people? And we'll get into that a little bit in a moment. We're going to realise that God is the God of the universe and he has tried to speak to these people. Um, and he's, there's been times where he's offered them um, hope, I guess, and another way, but they've, they've lived a, a, a terrible life. They've, they're following demonic um, strongholds and satanic um, worshipping Baals and stuff like that. So we'll continue on. And it says, You must not intermarry with them, and you must not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. So God, God just know, knows what's going on here. We know that uh, if they didn't wipe out the people, the kingdom, so they're going into this new kingdom, and these people have their own beliefs. And God understands how beliefs work. Like, beliefs are strong, okay? They're the things that that influence us. Um, kingdoms are built on common belief. And he, he spent this time with the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years and he's knocked out all of the Egyptian culture that they had in them, that they had for 400 years, and he's changed that. And he's building a kingdom people with his belief system. But he knows if they go across the Jordan, 
that they're going to go into a place that is extremely sinful. They're um, killing children. They're sacrificing children to other gods. Um, they've got all different types of sexual temple worship and crazy things. And he knows that if they don't wipe them out, they're going to marry with their sons and daughters and they're going to take that culture, they're going to take that, th that thing from them because that culture and that belief is, has been in those people for so long. Um, so that's, that's why God is asking them to do this. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you and you defeat them, you must completely destroy them. Sorry, I've just read that. You must not intermarry with them. You must not give your daughters or their sons or take their daughters for your sons because they will turn your sons away from, you, from me to worship other gods. Then the God's anger will burn against you. Sorry, then the Lord's anger will burn against you and he'll swiftly destroy you. Instead, this is what you are to do to them. Tear down their altars, smash their sacred pillars, cut down their Asherah poles and burn their carved images. God knows that all of these things, all these belief systems in these, in these culture or in this kingdom that they're going into is going to impact the Israeli people. And he wants the Jews to live his way out of his kingdom because all kingdoms are built on common belief. Okay, and I want to challenge you. What kingdom is your belief building? Okay, and this is, this is crucial to what God is trying to do with these people. For you are a holy people, belonging to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen. He's created them as His holy people, and they're His, and He wants them to believe His kingdom ways, and He wants them to go out and expand the kingdom of God. You to be His own possession out of all the peoples on the face of the earth. So we've got Joshua. And he's, um, he's basically creating the physical kingdom. Now, m people that are in my link group or people that know me well know that I love types and shadows. And types of shadows is usually it's something, uh, a type of Christ or a type of kingdom that's in the future. And generally it's in the Old Testament and it's a type or a shadow of the things to come. Okay, so Joshua uh, going in to take over the physical um, kingdoms and bring in the kingdom of God on earth is a type of Jesus. Okay, so Joshua and Jesus actually share the same Hebrew name. Um, we just know Jesus as Jesus because of the English word. But Jesus is ushering in the spiritual kingdom of God. Okay, so this is a type. Joshua is a type of going into the land of Jesus going in and spiritually now building his kingdom. So we're going to jump into the New Testament now and we'll have a look at what uh, Jesus has to say about kingdoms and beliefs. Sorry, before we get to that, the Israel, we're going to jump forward to where um, what happened after Joshua went into the land. So God's commanded them to go and wipe out these peoples and uh, they obviously haven't done it. So if you read through the Bible... Um, Joshua went into the land and they got fooled. They got tricked a few times. Kings would uh, got dressed in shaggy clothes and come to them and said, we're from a faraway land. We don't have much food. We don't have much money. And, and there's things like this and basically lied and made a, a pact with them, um, which God didn't want them to do. And they made a pact that they wouldn't wipe them out. Anyway, they found out they were lying, so they didn't wipe everyone out. But they also didn't um, wipe out all the women um, and the children as well. They decided that they want to keep them for themselves. So um, Judges explains a little bit later on what's happened to those Israeli people because they haven't followed God's commands. Okay, So the Israelites did what was evil in the Lord's sight. They worshipped the Baals. They followed other gods from the surrounding peoples and bowed down to them. They angered the Lord. And abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. For they abandoned and worshipped the Baals and the Ashtoreths. So we see there what happens. Like God's given them a command to go in and to wipe these people out. I, go, I know that sounds terrible. And if you want to chat about that, we can. 
Um, but we're going to remember there's types and shadows of what's happening here. And they didn't do what God had commanded because they're human and um, they obviously saw the daughters of these other kingdoms and thought they would be good for wives. Um, and what happened is they, they married with those people and their culture, so their beliefs for their kingdom impacted them and made it very difficult for them to not worship the wrong gods. Um, so we'll jump into what Jesus has to say in the New Testament about kingdoms. And it's from Luke 17, 20. When he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdoms of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God is coming, is not coming with something observable. So he's telling them, you're not going to be able to see it. It's not physical, okay? He's telling them that it's spiritual. No one will say, see here or there, for you see the kingdom of God is in your midst. And he's telling them that the kingdom of God is within them, okay? Well, at this point, he is with them and he is in their midst. And he's basically letting them know that he is the Messiah, okay? But he lives in us now, now that he has uh, died on the cross and ascended into heaven. And then we'll jump to Matt 28, 19. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So he's saying there, go and make disciples. So he's, he's got his disciples. He's taught them his ways. He's taught them God's ways. He's taught them kingdom principles. Okay. And he's, he's caused their belief to shift from the Jewish culture into the new Jesus culture or the Christian culture. And he's changed their belief so that their minds can go and spread the kingdom of God because all kingdoms are built on common belief. And I will challenge you, what kingdom is your belief building? And we'll get to that shortly. So he's told them to go and make disciples of them and to spread the kingdom of God. And that's, that's what we're encouraged to do as well. So we're to go to all the nations and we're to impact them from the inside out. Okay, so we're not to go and slaughter nations and build the physical kingdom anymore um, like he did in the Old Testament. He knows that we can infiltrate into the societies that we are in and we are to build the kingdom spiritually from the inside outward. Baptise them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So he's telling to teach them. Um, when I first started reading the Bible, 2 Timothy 3.16 was a scripture that I really gravitated to. Um, and it talks about all scripture being God inspired, God breathed, and it's good for doctrine, for teaching, and for all of these things. So he's telling us to grab the word of God and to study that and to use that to teach the people about the kingdom of God. Um, and to observe everything I have commanded you. So all the things that Jesus has done or all the things that God has um, written in, in his word is good for us. That's the kingdom of God. That is God's belief system and how he wants us to believe and, and how he wants us to think. And he wants us to observe those things still. Um, it's no longer by law that um, you would make it to heaven. It's made by grace. God, God has covered that for us, okay? It's not through um, sins that, we, you know, that we're judged and don't make it to heaven anymore, but he still has kingdom principles that he wants us to understand. So I guess you're probably wondering, well, how does that fit into my life? How, do, how, does, what, how does that work now? And um, I guess what we need to understand is that our beliefs, okay, that re represents the kingdom of God. And that, that represents how um, we show this, this God and this kingdom to the people that are around us. And the culture of God is how we're to build the kingdom these days because it's what we believe, okay? The kingdom of God is built or all kingdoms are built on common belief. And I challenge you, what kingdom is your belief building? Because we live in a world now where there's so many things that are raging against us. There's so much sexual immorality. There's so many things like when I was younger, when I was down in Melbourne, that was just part of the culture that I was a part of that just seems normal. And we, we live in a culture war now where they're trying to, people are trying to cancel out um, Christian values and they're trying to cancel it out and say that it's not relevant for today. 
They're saying that it's, that it's not real, that it's too difficult, that it's violent, that it's not right. But the thing is, the kingdom of God, it's, it's love and it's what we need to be able to show people. We need to make sure that we read His Word of God and we get it into us. And where we go, we carry that with us. And we make sure that that belief grows God's kingdom, that it, that it impacts the people around us. And we're going to need to stand firm. And I've, I've got a prime example of what that looks like if we don't. Okay, If we don't take this kingdom of God and we don't grab a hold of the beliefs of God and hold fast to them, culture is just going to wipe that out. It's, just, it's going to clean the slate of Christianity. It's going to clean the slate of what belief is. If we water down our beliefs... What are we? And, how, and what kingdom do we then represent? Okay, if we allow culture and if we allow the world around us to impact us and to start changing our belief system, what kingdom is our beliefs then now building? Okay, so there's, there's motivation there for you to take what God has and try and share that with the world because it's, it's precious and it's, it's God's love and it's all the amazing things that he has in store for us. So there's a new movie that's um, come out on Netflix recently and I'm, I'm sure some of you have probably heard of it before. It's called um, Cutie and if you haven't, it's a French film. Okay, So this is a prime example of what happens when Christian values or when, when we don't um, share the kingdom of God and what he values. Okay, so this, this movie uh, is about 11-year-old girls and they're, it's a French film, they're dancing with, it's, it's kind of a cross between Madonna and Miley Cyrus and some soft porn movie. It's very impactful and very disgusting. Um, when I watched it, I was shocked. So it's 11-year-old girls, they're acting out their own um, like age so these girls, at the end scene, um, is them in very you know skimpy clothes, which could be normal, I guess. But the thing is that the way that they're dancing and the way that they're uh, touching their bodies and stuff like that is not the way that God wants um, girls to act. I mean, He doesn't even us want us to act to have to think that those sexual um, moves and those sexual you know things that make us feel good about ourselves, he doesn't want us to have to think that way. And if we allow, if we don't stand up and talk about these things and let the world know that God doesn't want this, then culture's just going to wipe over this. Netflix is a mainstream streaming uh, video service, okay? And they've got this movie on there with 11-year-olds doing this. And, and it's all over Twitter and stuff, cancel Netflix and whatnot. So it's just that's just one example of what happens if we don't share this kingdom, if our beliefs don't build the kingdom of God. Um, much like the Israelite people, what, what will happen in generations? What will happen to my ancestors, my great-great-grandchildren, if I don't teach them and get them to carry that kingdom of God forward? And what happens if that kingdom belief doesn't move forward and impact the culture the way that Jesus wanted us to to share that, what will happen? Um, it, it, it worries me sometimes, but I have faith that God will, he'll, he'll provide. In the end, He wins. But I just encourage you to look at people that are being impacted by their Christian faith. Um, Israel Falal is one prime example also of something that's happened with culture. I mean, he shared a scripture straight from God. Okay, now this scripture is heavy impacting, I get that, but God's ki all kingdoms are built on common belief. Okay, what belief or what kingdom is your belief building? So I want to have a quick look at these scriptures um, that Israel, and I know they're heavy hitting, but this is stuff, these are the things that God has in His Word of God. And again, if you're new and you're, you're just watching this and you're wondering what's going on um, and you're not don't understand Christianity, I'd love to chat to you more about that, okay? But we're talking about the kingdom of God and the things that he believes in and the things that he wants us to take into the world. 
So this is like this is just to explain how people how hard it is for people to share their faith. So um, Israel Flower copped it hard in the media because of this, um, but it's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. It says, Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit, inherit God's kingdom? He's talking about the kingdom again. Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people, adulterers, adulteresses, or males who have sex with males, not thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The thing that amazes me is that I didn't see any drunkards jumping up and down on the news saying, this is atrocious what Israel for Allah is saying. I didn't see any adulterers. I didn't see any thieves, okay? Because that's not what the culture is trying to smooth over us at the moment, okay? It was the sexually immoral bit that people took a hold of and got so angry at. And we've got to be, we've got to be fast in our confession. We need to be fast in our beliefs and we need to be firm. We need to be loving in the way that we share it. And granted, Israel Folau probably didn't do it in a, in a gracious way, but we need to be able to share these things because they're going to impact our culture. They're going to impact our world. And we need to be able to stand up and know that the kingdom of God is ultimately a righteous path and it's a loving path and it's a path that Jesus wants us to go into the world and share. And we need to do it in a way where the Holy Spirit is guiding us and He's speaking to us and allowing us to show these people what God's values are. Because it is a cultural war. People. It is a culture war. They're trying to wipe, people are trying to wipe out culture. They're trying to wipe out God's culture, okay? Trying to get rid of Christmas trees in Sydney, etc., etc. There's just things that are happening. So how do we, as a church, how do we deal with that? And I guess with the kingdom builders, what would I would say is that, well, you know, it's very much a spiritual kingdom, but we also need a physical things to be able to impact the world around us. So we need to have church building. So um, I would challenge you to read the Bible and, and study out tithing and giving and how that works. That, that's one way of expanding the kingdom of God. Maybe God's called you to be a missionary. Okay, that's going into other countries or even it's just going into the culture, the people that are around you and being a missionary of God and sharing that and building the kingdom of God, making disciples of them and teaching them. Um, there's many ways for you to impact the kingdom of God, okay? And I just pray that um, you guys will pray about the best ways for you to impact the people around you in a loving way. And just realise that some of the scriptures are heavy hitting in the Bible. We've got to read it in context of what Jesus has to do for us and what He's done for us and the love that He has for us, okay? And I just pray that we, we study those tough scriptures like what I just read then and learn a way to be able to share them in a righteous and loving, just way and that our kingdom, the he God's kingdom is built with a common belief. And I challenge you, what kingdom is your belief building? God bless you, church. I thank you all and I hope you have an amazing week. And uh, yeah, I pray that you uh, comment in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube or however you're watching it. And I would love to chat to you a little bit more about uh, God's kingdom and how He wants us to build that. Bless you, church.